And I, I have a very specific assignment and I'm gonna take care of kingdom business. And then we can do whatever else we wanna do, but I have not been to bed. I, I slept two hours, two nights ago, three hours the night after that, and no, nothing last night, not even in bed. Because we're at a point of absolute kingdom attention. For those who are perceptive in the spirit, it is not difficult to discern that something is going on. And I think for too long, our preachers have been puppets instead of prophets. And I think the pablum that they have perpetrated from the pulpits of the United States of America, not only in their pulpits, but on television must come to an end and we must once again hear the prophetic and clarion voice of God and I believe the people are ready to hear it. Dr. Oral Roberts is gone. Dr. Lester Sumrall is gone. Dr. Kenneth E. Hagen is gone. R.W. Schambach is gone. E.V. Hill is gone. And what will replace those voices? Now, I want you to be seated, but I want you to stay in the same attitude. I want you to give me about 25 minutes, about 25 minutes. Now, if you're looking for user friendly, you made a wrong turn. If you're looking for nice and quiet, and don't disturb anything, you made a wrong turn. Because in here, we're worshipers. In here, we're praisers. In here, we understand. We understand that there's a battle raging, and we understand the greatest weapon that we have are two things, a prophetic word and a praise. Those two things, a word and a praise. Judah, has to roar, all right? Now look at Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12. I guess I might as well look at it. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12. You got it? Okay, keep looking, you'll find it. Matthew 11, Verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. I still don't think we really have come to the consummate resolution and the divine edict and revelation of God that we're in a battle. This is a fight. There really is a devil loose. And let me tell you, he's not just loose out yonder. He's loose in the church. He's loose against your family. He's loosed against your finances. He's loosed against our nation. He is coming against America with everything he has in his arsenal. He's coming against the church. He's coming against me. He's coming after every preacher and every person of righteousness. He has declared one last all-out offensive, and I'm going to make an announcement. You can't touch this. When's anybody going to get mad? When's anybody going to get angry enough to do something about it? Twenty-four years of age. Twenty-four years of age. 
He only been talking for 21 years. His brain's only been developed for the last two and a half years. What are you watching? What are you listening to? Where are you going? What are the influences in your life? Well, why is all this activity stirring up? People just, people just don't understand. People just don't understand what, what in the world is going on. What is, well, let's see what kind of education he had. Well, let's, let's figure out what kind of personality type he is. Well, let, because but for the grace of God, there go we all. Let me sit up in here like you're so... Dr. Oral Roberts that said, before the great and terrible day of the Lord, there will be three separate demonic entities loosed, particularly against the United States of America. I do not have time this morning to take you through all three and to prove to you that every one of them is in major operation right now. I will not yell and scream to get your attention. I will simply tell you the truth. Dr. Lester Sumrall, before he went to be with the Lord, said that Apollyon would be loosed upon the face of the earth. It would emanate from the United States of America and it would come through a screen, television screen, computer screen, cell phone screen, movie theater screen, screen. On the premiere night in Aurora, Colorado, at a midnight showing, at a midnight showing, we're, we're rearing children in homes without a mother and a father because we have witnessed the absolute disintegration of the family in the United States of America. It continues to be under attack. But today, we are living in a nation where if we're not, we should be grieving, right? That in this civilized nation, a 24-year-old walks in to see, what is it? Oh, the dark night rising. Some of you broke your necks to get there. Were you inspired? You know, there, there he is, and, and you're, just, you're just sitting there going to watch a movie. And gunshots start ringing out. And 10 minutes later, 12 people are dead, 58 are hospitalized. And everybody wrings their hands and says, why? In order to have an impact on our society, this morning, God is calling the body of Christ to rise far above the status quo of church normalcy. We, we are right now living in a society where right has been wrong for so long that righteousness has become the abnormal thing. The Apostle Paul commended the remnant church in Thyatira because they had not experientially known or come into the depths of Satan. Make no mistake about it, the devil does have that inner circle of darkened hearts to whom he and he alone have imparted the mysteries of iniquity and the depths of degradation over a period of time. It didn't happen overnight. Over a period of time, these doctors of damnation have worked like leaven, permeating the mindset of the body of Christ to the point that we now call evil good and good evil. We have become so politically correct 
that right is no longer right and wrong is no longer wrong. There is some amalgamation, some blending together, some, 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 some social norm to which we all are expected to conform. We say we're weak. God says maybe you're wicked. We say well, we're sick, we have a sickness. God says maybe you're sinful. Have you noticed in your readings, we've had so much greasy grace propagated on the body of Christ and so much your good life and have a good time and that we are blinded to the light and revelation that we are in a struggle. There really is a devil loose. Somebody brought a situation to me the other day and they said, well, this is going on and this is going on and this is going on. And so now, how are we gonna deal with that? And, and, and everything was in the natural. Well, we need to have this person talk to this person about that. Then we need to put this standard in and we need to put this in the rule book and we need to do it. And, and, and I just stopped and said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What we are not realizing here is all of this is just an outgrowth. There's something going on in the spirit and until it's dealt with in the spirit, I don't care what you do in the natural or in your mind or how you try to fix it until you deal with the core, you will deal with the outgrowth and the outworkings and the outcroppings. If a tree is diseased, cut it down at the root. Don't start plucking leaves off of it. If it bears not fruit, Jesus said, hew the thing down. It's no longer good. There's some stuff you got to cut out. You got to root out. You got to pull down. You got to destroy before you can plant and build. I don't know. I, I don't know. No. I'm, no. We call evil good and good evil. How, you know, I've been screaming it for years. I don't just want partial birth abortion outlawed in this country. I want Roe versus Wade overturned. And you wonder why the devil hates me? I'm growing a little weary. We're trying to educate children on one-fifth intuition what our taxes pay for for them to be trained in secular humanism. I get weary with driving by and seeing what my tax dollars bill. In places where the name of my God is damned and banned and where prayer is not allowed and where you can have any book you want to except the Bible. I don't know. I want, I want a voucher system. That's what I want. I want my tax dollars to go to educate children the way I want them to be educated. That's my right as a parent. That's my right as a citizen. Not to have you tell me how my children will be educated. America's rolling in luxury and reveling in excess, rollicking in pleasure and revolting in sin. The question is, which way are we gonna go? Are we gonna allow this kind of stuff just to continue or are we going to stand up as believers and bombard the heavens and say, no you don't devil, no you don't, not inside this circle. Inside this circle, 
there is shalom. Inside this circle, there is nothing lacking. There is nothing missing. Jesus is the center of this circle, and my circle of influence is expanding, and I am believing that there be no place left for the adversary inside this circle. Uh. We live in a nation that preserves nature and kills babies. But how many of you gave an offering this month to the women's clinic? We preserve nature and kill our babies. We're smarter, but we're not wiser. We understand more and we, we know more and we understand less. We go faster and we end up nowhere. We have the technology and know how to build, to conquer space. We have solid, strong houses and weak, sick homes. There's a devil loose. You're not going to shout me down this morning, but I'm going to tell you what is what is. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you what is what is. Therefore, a door has been opened. A door has been opened for the spirit of Antichrist to use demon spirits. What? Go ahead, get your local TV preacher to talk about demon, demons and demonic activity on television. Find me one. The spirit of Antichrist to use demon spirits as vessels of vengeance, wrecking havoc, killing and stealing and destroying from international madmen like Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Or go back wherever you want, Hitler, Mussolini, Saddam Hussein, Adolf Hitler. to polish politicians propagating perverted legislation, to the street punk with an assault rifle, to all the demonically deranged devotees of hardcore Satanism that are lurking in the darkness as housewives and businessmen and construction workers and university professors. Now Paul said the reason this kind of thing would be able to come in would be because men would give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. A liar does not have a sin problem. He's just an extrovert with a lively imagination. Adultery is no longer sin and not to be spoken of in the pulpit. It's no longer sin in Hollywood, and it's sure enough not sin in the church. Fornication and lasciviousness, anger and bitterness, strife and unforgiveness, anger and resentment, tail-bearing and tongue-wagging and gossip, I understand I'm a dinosaur and a whole lot of folk would like to put me out to pasture. But I can tell you this, when they drag me off of this platform and they put me in a car and haul me away from this building, I will still be shouting, there's a devil loose. We have children, children living in our homes, attending our churches, populating our schools, who are driven daily with destructive thoughts inspired by demon spirits. What we call a dysfunctional home, your Bible calls a generational curse. You know, one minute, you know. All of this onslaught of evil 
is too subtle, it's too sinister to be of human origin. I'm sorry, but I just, I just don't believe your mind can get that messed up in 24 years without a whole lot of help from somewhere. I said without a whole lot of help from somewhere. Well, well Pastor Rob, perhaps people like that have a sickness. Okay, and who's the author of that? What, see how you come back at me? Unless we are brave enough to get to the root, we're never gonna solve the problem. And the root, the root, is the spirit of this world, the spirit of the age, the spirit of antichrist, the spirit which is against God, contrary to God, enmity of the things of God, carnal minds that cannot know the things of God, that are separated from God, that live in darkness. I'm sorry, there are two worlds, one of light, one of darkness, one of righteousness, And I'm weary with a church that wants to stand right in the middle. Well, now you're making me feel uncomfortable. Better me than the devil. You want my discomfort or his? Because at some point, you got to put your foot down, get Jesus as the center, Jabez, of everything you're doing, and let everything emanate outwardly from him. There is a devil loose. And he's after you, and your children, and your neighborhood. Now, I understand that Jesus won the victory. But that's like saying that the Ohio legislature passed some legislation, but they don't have any police officers. How are you going to enforce the law? God on Calvary, through the blood of Jesus Christ, gave us the legislation. And then he ordained us and anointed us and deputized us to go enforce the boundaries of this kingdom and put our foot down and tell the devil, no, you don't. I'm an authority here. I'm an authority in my home. When I walk in a hospital, I'm an authority now. I, I, all of you little sicknesses and diseases that are as a result of the fall of man and were not present before the fall of man and are not present in heaven have no right to me in here. So don't be thinking that you can jump out of somewhere else and jump in here on me because I sanctify myself right now. When I walk in a hotel room in Kokomo, Indiana, somebody else has been in there viewing pornography for 24 hours and all of those spirits running around. No, you don't, devil. I bind you now. Whatever I bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever I loose on earth is loosed in heaven. And I'm weary with too many people turning the devil loose. Shout, I bind you now. All of this onslaught of evil is too subtle and sinister to be of human origin. It must be and is the carefully calculated conspiracy of demon spirits. Instead of walking the hallways and passing out convictions, school administrators walk the hallways and pass out condoms to 14-year-olds that your tax dollars paid for by some grant to Planned Parenthood. Now, I know that there are those that, you know what? I'm going to say a thing right now. There are preachers that criticize me because I preach about the rapture of the church. And they say that's escapism. Let me tell you what I think is escapism. 
for you to gather thousands of people around you, dim the lights way down low, soothe their emotions, and tell them nothing about the devil that's attacking their soul and dragging them into hell, that's escapism. I don't want a pastor, an escapism church. I don't want to lead a parade. I never have. I'm still looking for an army that will put their foot down, push their plate back and say, no, you don't devil. I know where this is coming from. Get out of my body sickness. Get out of my mind torment. Get out of my church. Get out of my home. Get out of the theater where I go. Let's just serve notice on the devil. When you show up, that's his eviction paper. Somebody needs to shout. You need to shout him out. Instead of handing out detention slips, they're handing out directions to the local Planned Parenthood clinic. Irritation levels are running high. And you ever notice that? Notice how agitated everybody is? It's like everybody is PMSing. It's like the whole world needs my doll. Pampering, whatever it is you take. What do you look at me funny for? If somebody would say that in the movie you went to, you'd laugh hysterically and slap your knee. But in here, that's a counterfeit party. And eventually the devil is gonna come with his hand outstretched to collect the cover charge. I'll tell you where the party is, it's inside this circle. I'll tell you where joy is, and let me remind you, if the devil can't steal your joy, he can't take your stuff, because the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's the reason he wants you overwhelmed. That's the reason he wants you depressed. That's the reason he wants you disconnected. That's the reason he wants you being Charlie Brown. Woe is me. Why is everybody always picking on me? Somebody rise up and shout. There's a devil loose. Well, I can't afford to be in church on Wednesday night. I got a business. I submit to you, you can't afford not to be in church. There's a devil loose. Where did we get this idea that the struggle was over, that the battle was over? that there wasn't any fighting left to be done. Now you've got a wrong conception about fighting because we fought at the beginning in here and some of you couldn't even get one little half mass hand up because my Bible says when the children of Mount Seir and Ammon and Moab came against the children of Judah, God told Jehoshaphat, well, why about no swords? Just get out there in the morning. And when you get out there, get your hands up. And when you get out there, get your dance on. This is before the Holy Ghost. This is before Calvary. This is before the New Testament. This is before the church got petrified and putrefied. Get out there in the morning, get your hands up, get your dance on, get your shout out, find yourself a spin, get yourself a wave, get yourself a pat and foot. Somebody turn around, somebody wave your hands, somebody clap, somebody shout, somebody shout unto God with the voice of triumph. And when you get up in the morning, say, devil, I'm taking authority inside this circle. Don't be thinking. you. Get your praise on. Get your praise on. Get your praise on, Judah. Get a shout on. Get a glory on. Drive him out. Drive him out. 
All you've got to do is magnify the Lord. It's oh, magnify the Lord, for He is good and His mercy endureth forever. Irritation levels are running high. Patience is running low. Temptation to withdraw from fellowship at church is strong. I'm about ready to cut loose. I, I, I don't care if there are 50 people that show up. I'm feeling something stirring me, and I got a feeling before long, I'm going to get on a service like this and say, y'all come back tonight, and then we'll come back tomorrow night. And by about the fifth night, something will get a hold of you that's never had a hold of you before, and something will laugh let go of you let's never let go somebody praise him right now somebody praise him. praise him because he's greater than every devil praise him because he's given you authority over all devils and to cure diseases somebody praise him because he gave you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemy Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He has not given you the spirit of fear, but of peace and of love and of sound and discipline mind. Find it out! You have no right. You have no right. If you're watching me right now, in the name of Jesus, I bind every principality, I bind every power, I bind the rulers of the darkness of this world, I bind spiritual wickedness in high places, I bind demon spirits, I bind the attitudes of men, I bind the actions of men, I bind your former lifestyle, I bind every spirit but the Holy Spirit, and I declare your freedom in the name of Jesus.